this is part two of the bi biomolecules lecture. So in this uh, in this part, we will be discussing about the two of the four classifications of biomolecules, which are the carbohydrates and the lipids. So carbohydrates, they are the most abundant of the biological molecules. They are mostly made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but they are not limited to only those three. So it ha they have a one is a two is to one ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So the, the, the main functions of the carbohydrates are for structural materials, fuels, and for storing and transporting energy. So we have the carbohydrates, uh, as a biomolecule, they are polymers, they are large complex molecules. So the, the simplest form or the building blocks for them, we have the simple carbohydrates or the monosaccharides. Mono, which means one, and saccharide, which, uh, which means sugar. So it's one sugar. So carbon backbone with carbon in a hydroxyl functional group. So these are the main structural um, means uh, structural uh, description for your carbohydrates. So they have carbon backbones and hydroxyl function groups. So the distinguishing feature of your carbohydrates, they are water, uh, they are very hydrophilic, water loving. So not all of them are soluble in water like starch and cellulose. However, they tend to absorb a large amount of water because their, their unique characteristic is their hydroxyl groups, a very large amount of hydroxyl groups. Hydroxyl is a functional groups containing oxygen and hydrogen bonded to carbon. So this is your hydroxyl group, another hydroxyl group, another hydroxyl, another hydroxyl, another hydroxyl. So for almost every carbon you have in your sugar molecules, in your carbohydrates molecule, you have a hydroxyl group attached to that. Now they are... There are carbohydrates that have short chains. We call them oligosaccharides. Or if there are just two sugars there, it's a disaccharide. So examples of that, we have the lactose, the sugar found in milk, and the sucrose, stable sugar. The refined sugar you use, in, uh, add, uh, you use to add in your coffee in the morning. So that's sucrose. So sucrose is made up of two monosaccharides, the glucose and fructose, which are bonded together. So you had a condensation reaction here, you form a disaccharide. So it's a disaccharide or, well, technically a polymer. So you have two sugars. So for some carbohydrates, they can be complex. So they can be very, very large, such as cellulose. Cellulose is made up of hundreds of thousands. Uh, when we say thousands, uh, a, a typical one is around 20,000. So poly they Polysaccharides, that is the usual norm, is 20,000 numbers of individual units of your sugars. So that's one sugar molecule, so 20,000 of them banded together. So they can form straight chains or you can form branches. So we have many different types of monosaccharides and the, pol the complex carb carbohydrates can, fo uh, can be composed of only one. For example, starch is made up of glucose only. Cellulose is also glucose only, but some other polysaccharides or uh, like the, um, the signaling molecules, they are made up of a combination of glucose, fructose, maltose, galactose, mannose, sugars. So different types of monosaccharides banded together. So we have the three most common complex carbohydrates, cellulose, starch, and glycogen. In fact, cellulose is the one that's the most common and the reason why carbohydrates is the most abundant because it's because of cellulose so this is starch so cellulose this is cellulose so you form there are actually many chains and then each chain is inter is interacting they are bonded by hydrogen bonds so as you can see they do they are not so this one chain and another chain or another segment of the chain so you have here they are not technically covalently bonded so they are just bonded by hydrogen bond so it's a hydrogen bonded to an electronegative atom so that's what holds them together and this is the reason why cellulose is very tough and very um, structurally uh, a very uh, strong structurally strong molecule now in contrast you have your starch this is the molecule of starch so imagine 20,000 of them forming a chain so you have uh, this is the amylose 
So they tend to form buccal structures. And another one is the amylopectin. So amylopectin component of the starch is the one that has branches. And then this is glycogen. Glycogen is the storage of sugar in your liver. So your liver produces glycogen to store the sugars that you intake in your food. So glycogen, as you can see, it's very branch, highly branch structure. So another type of carbohydrate is chitin, but unlike your cellulose, your starch, and your amylose, which is technically a, a mono, uh, is made up of just sugars or uh, glucose molecules, so only one type, chitin is a more complex one. So the, the functional, uh, chitin is the functional equivalent to cellulose. So its, its function is more on structural integrity. So it forms the cell wall of the fungi, the mushrooms, and the also of the skeletons of your the insects, the shrimp. The shell of the shrimp is made up of chitin. The shell of the crab, the shell of lobsters, spiders, they're made up of chitin. So chitin is durable. It can be translucent and a flexible structural material. Actually, there are a lot of studies trying to extract chitin because chitin can be used as an alternative to plastic, because uh, especially because it's very tough and strong. At the same time, it's biodegradable. Now, they are made up of unbranching chains of nitrogen-containing sugar monomers. So when I say nitrogen-containing sugar monomers, you have a sugar. So this is a sugar monomer, but it contains nitrogen. So they are banded together, actually alternating yung kanyang structural form, but that is uh, one segment of a chitin. So chitin is a very long chain. As long as cellulose is long. So you can find them, them in the shells. For example, the lobster here, the shell is made of chitin. So the next class is lipids. Lipids are uh, if the sugars or if the carbohydrates, the unifying characteristic is that they are very hydrophilic, they tend to attack water, and they have a lot of hydroxyl groups. The lipids, on the other hand, their unifying characteristic is that they hate water. They are very oily. They are very fatty. They are hydrophobic. They hate water. So there is a large variety of structures for the, the lipid classifications. It's actually, in terms of structure, structure they are one of the mo most. Uh, they have one of the more diverse structures in terms of the range because they can form um, rings, few strings. At the same time, they can be chains. Now, fatty acids is one uh, classification or a part of the lipids. So if they are the components of the fats. They are long hydrophobic hydrocarbon tail with hydrophilic carboxyl heads. So saturated fatty acids uh, have straight tails with single bands, whereas we have unsaturated fatty acids. They have, some of them have crooked tails with double bands. So let me show you. So this is an example. This here shows one saturated and two unsaturated fatty acids. So straight chains, the saturated fatty acid here on the left is a straight chain. So all of them, all of the carbons here have single bands in that chain. Except for this, sorry, except for the upper part which contains a carbonyl or rather a carboxylic group. So this is the why it's called acid, fatty acid, because this part here is acidic. Now, but it's made up of very long chain so the majority of this molecule hates water because you have carbon and hydrogen carbon carbon bonds they are nonpolar if you have a nonpolar bond you hate water so nonpolar bonds tend to, to be hydrophobic now the, only this part is hydrophilic so you have a very straight chain so the straight chain of your um, fatty acid enables them to solidify easily so if you have oils that tend to solidify easily such as butter and um, coconut oil. Coconut oil is mostly made up of uh, palmitic acid which is straight uh, saturated fatty acid. They, they have, um, it tends to solidify easily. Unlike other oils such as olive oil, so they do not solidify easily. The reason why is because these oils have your double bonds. So, because of the double bond, so remember, carbon can only carry four hydrogens, uh, sorry, four bonds. So, 
you are missing one hydrogen here instead of this carbon having one hydrogen only another one hydrogen only because of the double bond so unlike the uh, this one for every carbon you have two hydrogens this one some of them only contain one that's why it's called unsaturated because they are not saturated with hydrogens but anyway because of the double bonds your acid your fatty acids then becomes bent so they become they have kinks we call them the kinks so they become bent so this is called omega-6 because the the positioning of the double bond is from the sixth carbon from the end if you count from the end omega is the end so the omega carbon one two three four five six so that's the sixth um, fatty acid on the uh, from the end so that contains the first double bond now another one is this one omega-3 so omega-3 is the third carbon from the end now you can usually see omega-6 and omega-3 uh, designations in canned tuna usually or in other foods that uh, uh, that advertise as uh, good for the heart so on and so forth so there are fats they are called good for the heart because they tend to dissolve the the other saturated fats so the the thing about the unsaturated fats is that if you have the, the more kinks or the more double bonds you have the healthier the fat is so that's why omega-3 is considered a very healthy oil now in contrast we have what you call the trans fat a trans fat is uh, unsaturated so they have double bonds however their structure is similar to the saturated fatty acid so instead of the double band that causes uh, a break or a kink your double bonds do not so it's still straight chain but even though it contains double band now that is why it's called unhealthy actually that's the bad cholesterol in foods the trans fatty acids because they uh, they tend to solidify easily and plug your uh, veins and arteries now the next so fat the fatty acids form the fats so it's not fats are uh, fatty acids are not fats they are just constituents so fats basically are is a molecule containing three fatty acids so you have three fatty acids there that are bound by a glycerol molecule so you have the acid group there they are bound by another three carbon molecule <clears throat> which is the glycerol so you have a glycerol head and a fatty acid so triglycerides they are the most abundant and richest energy sources in vertebrates based on the number of carbons that they have that's why keto diet is considered uh, a very high energy diet so you do not uh, because the body usually tend to use carbohydrates as the main energy source it's the first option as an energy source but when you do not have carbohydrates your body will then uh, go to well actually proteins first before fats it will uh, degrade the proteins first that is why if you are doing keto diet you need to exercise regularly because otherwise your in the uh, with the lack of carbon or carbohydrates your body will degrade your muscles first before it goes to your fats so the fat is the third option because it's more difficult to process it's the highest um, energy highest energy sources in terms of uh, energy per gram however you have here uh, a, a little bit difficult uh, metabolic process to do now another classification of your lipids is the phospholipids so the phospholipids as its name you have a lipid which is a fatty acids two fatty acids bonded to your phosphate group so you have a phosphate group that's why it's called phospholipids a lipid with a phosphate so the important thing here about phospholipid is that they are amphiphilic amphiphilic means they uh, they are both hydrophobic and hydrophilic so you have a hydrophilic head which is larger as opposed to the fatty acids the hydrophilic part is just a very very small almost negligible one this one is pretty large so you have a large hydrophilic head and then you have the tails so these fatty acids or rather this phospholipid forms the 
bilayer, the membrane bilayer. So, the membrane bilayer is your cell membrane. So, this is the constituent of your cell membrane. So, another class of lipids is the waxes. So, waxes are very complex mixtures. They are very long fatty acid chains. So, how long? The typical one is 16 to 22, but for waxes, it numbers up to 40 carbons. So, you have very long fatty acid tails. And then, you also have long chain alcohol. So, it's actually ester. So, you have uh, the waxes, you form water repellent covering. So, for example, this wax is wax. So, it's water repellent. So, uh, what, uh, well, what else? Uh, spermacetti, I think, uh, and other waxes. The, the, um, the covering in the plants, those are waxy covering. So, those are waxes. And then, the last one are the steroids. Steroids, unlike your fatty acid, which just long chains, steroids are made up of rings. They are the fused ring structures. So, you have, this is a carbon chain, if you remember your simplified structural formula. Carbon chain, six carbon, hexagon, fused with one another. So, you have four. So, this is the typical sterol molecule. So, sterol, like cholesterol, that is a steroid type of molecule. So, cholesterol is a most important steroid. It's important because it regulates the fluidity of the cell membrane. However, it's implicated, it, ha it has been inf made infamous because it's implicated in the cause of heart diseases. But in fact, the cholesterol there is not uh, strictly cholesterol only. You also have here a uh, very bad uh, lipo lipoproteins. But anyway, we will be discussing that later when we go to proteins. Now, um, another type of sterol molecules, we have the hormones which are the estrogen and the testosterone. And other ones, you have the bile salts, component of the bile. Your liver produces bile salts. So you have, um, it helps degrade the lipids in your diet, as well as vitamin, vitamin D and other uh, similar water, so, uh, sorry, oil-soluble vitamins or lipids. So that's it for this part. So in the next part, we will be discussing about proteins.